Mark Trucks. Second example was uh, the exact example from the RPG is a player uses a thumbnail mark to know where all the islands in his deck are. And if any marking cards, if you know where a card in your deck is, you haven't put it there, it's still manipulation of game materials, and this is marked cards. There are a lot of ways of marking cards. Um, and it's a lot easier to gain advantage from marked cards than it is from travel. It's also usually a lot easier to catch people because rather than having everything be the same and only you knowing, it's visible to anyone. Uh, I'm going to go over some common basic ones um, very, very easily. The, the thumbnail thing was sleeves like this will get damaged. You can put thumbnail marks here and they'll leave an impression in the sleeve, which you guys can't see because you're far away. Um, but those happen naturally. When people shuffle like this, when people draw, sleeves get dinged up. Um, if you have the same ding in all of a certain kind of sleeve and you see it on top of your deck, uh, you will know that it is most likely that type of card. Uh, corner bends, if you shuffle decks a lot, right here where the sleeve is not supported by the corner, will get creased as well. Um, you can take advantage of this by using slightly older sleeves in, for example, all your basic lands, and then all your basic lands will have a crease here. Creases and nail bends are very visible on some kinds of sleeves and less visible on other kinds of sleeves, but able to be seen in pretty much any sleeve that people are using at a tournament. Um, they do not necessarily mean the player is cheating. So the, the what moves from mark cards, which is a warning or a game loss if you think that they could gain an advantage, but have not yet. So that's the, all those islands are marked, but he wasn't looking at his deck, he probably didn't notice. It's a game loss. Those islands are marked, and before he casts a spell, he looks at the top of his deck. That's a lot shady. Um, any, any excessive looking, this is terrible, but if I'm playing, and I'm considering, and I do something like this, every time I have a response, that's something that you should try to be on guard for. Um, even a quick glance, if you're trained, can do it, but a, a glance at something that is not the table, as the deck off to the side, should be noticeable to a judge who is watching a player's face. So if you're looking for marked cards, look at a player's face, look at his, I'll stand up again, sorry. Uh, look at a player's face, look at his eyes, look at how he takes in the game. Most players also tend to have a pattern of how they assess a board state. So, uh, given player, say, Bob, uh, when Bob is sitting there with a the counter spell in his hand, and a, his opponent plays a spell, uh, the first time this happens, you can watch what Bob does, and Bob will usually do something like, look at the spell, think about it, and some people think about it, their eyes go up like this, some people think about it, they look at their hand, and they kind of, they're glassy-eyed, and then they'll catalog their hand, they'll look one, two, three, their head might move, their eyes might move, they'll look at their lens, and then they'll stare for a while. And the staring is them deciding whether or not to counter spell. Um, if you watch a player, there is a series of four or five or six responses where he could do something. Players <laughs> tend to do things in the same order. They'll take a different amount of time. So they may look at the card longer, they may look at their hand longer, they may start off in a space longer. But it will always be the same order of look at the card, look at some people look at their lands first, some people look at their hands first. If a player all of a sudden does that and looks to the top of their deck, they may be hoping, but they also may be trying to gain information. So any break from that pattern is something that you want to be aware of. Don't jump on it the first time, but the second or the third or the fourth time, if he keeps looking at his deck, start being wary and worried about it. Uh, other examples are cards with art on the back, sleeves. Um, well, no, the IPG does not let us use sleeves that have art all the way to the borders. Uh, if you do not know why this is, it's because it is very, very easy to uh, get knowledge on what a card is from that sort of sleeve. When you look at the edge of a sleeve like this, um, I don't actually have full art sleeves with me, so I apologize, that's my mistake. Uh, if art goes to the edge here, the edge of the sleeve will actually be a different color. So you can see, say, a slightly miscut sleeve with a slightly uh, spaced over a black mark or green mark or white mark on the side of the sleeves. If you're looking for, say, a sideboard card and all of your sideboards are from a different pack of these full art sleeves, you can look at the side of the deck like this and have a good idea of where that sideboard card is. You did deck checks. Happens with normal sleeves as well, not art packs. Sometimes when you buy packs of 80 or 100, uh, you will get 
two packs of 40 sleeves, and they will be slightly different. Sometimes the uh, matte amount on the back is different, so it will be different levels of reflectiveness on the back of the sleeves. Sometimes it will be slightly miscut, so one will be longer towards the top here. Uh, sometimes they will be slightly stiffer, which is a lot harder to catch on marked cards, but you can see with older cards that sometimes they'll stand straight. Um, and an unfortunate thing is that many players sleeve their decks having organized them. So you'll open a pack of cards, put all of your spells into the first 40, and then open the second pack of cards and put your lands and sideboard into them. And now you have 40, 40 spells in different sleeves than lands and sideboards. Um, these are marked cards. They may not be manipulation of game materials, but it is something that you need to ask. And a good question to ask here is, did you buy sleeves today? You know, when did you sleeve your deck? This sort of question. Yes? Uh, one thing people might not be aware of is Ultra Pro just recently shaved about a millimeter off their sleeves. So if people buy sleeves from two different uh, places or at two different times and they're Ultra Pros, I, I mean, I did a deck check. I'm like, these seem a little bit. Just different. ever so just that, right. And I'm like, there's no way they shaved, you know. And, and I didn't realize that this had happened. All new Ultra Pro sleeves are just one millimeter thinner than old Ultra Pro so, sleeves. So, as you said, Ultra Pro, but that happens not just with Ultra Pros. And, and I guess all, all the Ultra Pros now are thinner because it's a, a different manufacturing chain. It's a manufacturing chain. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but any, any sleeve from any company will sometimes have one that's slightly shorter or one that's slightly longer. And so it's something you need to be aware of. In particular, the shorter sleeves uh, don't look like a lock from the top. They're hard to tell. But from the side like this, they're very evident here. And you can often cut to them because you'll be able to feel the ridges on the front of your hand. So if you put your hand here, you can um, often put a card on the top, which is another issue there. And or if you rest your hand on your deck, you can often tell what the top card is without looking. Yes. Uh, side note with that, I noticed uh, there, there's a lot of people when, when contemplating situations they have habits. If one of those habits is to take the top of your deck and thumb across it, if you, if you see a player manipulating his deck in any way, shape, or form, when he's not trying to draw cards or actually do a game action, it's a really good sign that something's up. Right. So as Adam said, if you see a player manipulating his deck, and I'm going to extend that to if you see a player touching his deck when an effect does not tell him to do so, watch him, because there's a good chance that he is going to be cheating in some way. Uh, it may be looking to draw an extra card, it may be looking to gain knowledge from marked cards. Um, touching your deck excessively or even at all is a bad sign. Uh, yes? Uh, what are some of the marked cards? Uh, players will often double sleep um, decks that are vintage or legacy because they're expensive cards. For those you don't know, a double sleeve card has a transparent uh, thinner sleeve on the inside and then it's put into another sleeve like this. Um, for this sort of thing, sometimes you will get cards sticking up ever so slightly like this. Uh, and I, I don't know how well you can see it back there, but there's a slight plastic lip from the interior sleeve on top of the other sleeve. Um, this falls on the same thing as shorter sleeves. You can visibly see it from the side. You can feel it with your fingers. Uh, so even if all of the core sleeves are fine, that is a way of uh, manipulating information from that. Uh, if you see a player do this before handing you a deck for a deck check, you need to be aware of that because sleeves that are slightly up like this will be slot down into the sleeve properly when they do this and add them to you. So, I need your decks. Uh, this is a bad sign. Shuffling is also a bad sign when they ask when you ask for their deck, but that's that's something that most people are not aware of to look out for. But also, um, a lot harder for their sleeves because sleeves are smaller than they used to be, but you can put one type of card at the top of the sleeve and another type of card at the bottom of the sleeve. So, uh, put, for example, lands flush with the top of the card like that, and non-lands flush with the bottom of the sleeve like that. It's a small difference, it's not immediately noticeable, but from the side of the deck, um, these will sag slightly, particularly with older sleeves, uh, and not sag on lands. Uh, less common now, as I said, because sleeves are getting smaller and, and a little bit better quality, but something that is worth looking for.
Uh, I never the final big thing for sleeves is misoriented sleeves. Um, it at a um, with Adam if Shaw, some of your cards are like this, at, at the lurk, like that is um, marked cards. The these cards are different from the top. They're not so apparent from that far away probably, I've but these open here, these open here. Um, a player can both see these and feel them, and if all of your lands are oriented one way or all, and all of your spells are oriented another way, that is a good way to get that sort of information. So if you have a deck that is not all oriented vertically, keep an eye on it. Um, any questions about marked cards? Anything I missed that is a good example? Uh, just a point on the sleeves being, well, cards being upside down. Um, it's particularly common in more casual players who aren't very rigid with their shuffling don't always check when they separate it into two piles to mix together which way up those piles are. So obviously there's a kind of a, a flip side here is don't witch hunt players, don't assume people are being shady because that thing sometimes does just happen because people are not very uh, careful with their, their, their thing. So yeah, educate them. Like, educate them. Tell them that obviously there's, that somebody might, someone else might get the wrong idea if half their cards are upside down. Get all the cards the right way up and ask them to try and keep them the right way up. Um, and as I said again, intent is important. You're not. It's it's mark cards, but not cheating. If you're not intending to do it, particularly um, if they learn to shuffle by shuffling poker cards because those don't matter which way up. They're right. So place. they don't. They don't they don't think about it. If they're not used to shuffling in sleeves, a lot of times they won't realize it. Marking this corner is probably more suspicious than marking any of these other corners because in a given hand, that corner is hidden by another card or by your physical hand. Well, also when you're when you when you're performing a deck check, like like if you were, and when you're yeah yeah when you when you slot them out, you don't see them on a deck chair. This is a very good point. So something that I was not aware of, but uh, if you see a markdown. Also, it seems like this is probably not a particularly common thing to get when you're shuffling, because you tend to shuffle like that, most players. So, uh, good point. Uh, foils. Foils qualifies mark cards. Uh, specifically, foils that look like this <laughs> are marked cards. Uh, and for those of you who haven't seen them, when these are in a sleeve, they sleep kind of both up like that, uh, in the middle of a deck. That sleeve is pretty obvious where it is. If you have one or two foils like that, even if they're not attempting to gain advantage, it's marked cards. If they are attempting to gain advantage, it's cheating. It's something to ask them about. Why is that foil? You know, have you kept it in a cold, wet car? Yada, yada, yada. And, from there. Um, and finally, kind of under marked cards, kind of under shuffling. Uh, for those of you who have ever seen somebody shuffle like this, <laughs> uh, that's the same thing. You know where a card is. You're not necessarily putting a card in a specific location because, well, you're probably a bad shuffler if you're doing quick. Uh, but that is knowing where cards are. That is equivalent to marked cards. So looking at the face of a card and Okay, now that card's at the bottom, if you're not putting it anywhere, is the same as looking at the back of the card and knowing what that card is. So that's that's going to be cheating manipulation game of chance. One of the things that I used to see at least some of the time was that uh, a surprising number of players will do a ritual shuffle with the cards facing towards them. <laughs> and I'm like, that's fine if you do one or two of those, if you're going back and forth and you go once when they're not. But I definitely saw players do a ripple shuffle facing towards them and then present you. It's like, you just saw your entire deck on hand and over me. So people do that and the excuse you always get is, oh, I want to bend my cards the other way. Fine, if you're going to do that, it's not shuffling. It's yeah. not, yeah. no you, It's not only is it not shuffling, it validates all of your shuffling. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything you do before that. So everything you do before that, that does no longer matter. Uh, uh, let me ask you a quick question. One of the reasons that someone might do that is because when you shuffle the other way, especially if you shuffle off, yeah. they're showing stuff to yeah. yeah. So they're thinking, oh, if I turn it, you can see it. Right. right. I, I mean, I there are. So don't shuffle it. Shuffle it face down or do this. Right. There are justifications. 